Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's episode I'm gonna take a look at a bunch of Commodore 1541 floppy disk drives. So these are just some of the floppy disk drives that I have that work with the old 8-bit Commodore machines uh, like the Commodore 64. And most of these are in good working conditions, but there is one of uh, unknown status that I'm going to take a look at uh, in this video first. The drives that you see here are variants of the 1541 floppy disk drive from Commodore. and. Uh, this one is in fact uh, a clone drive. It's called uh, the Oceanic OC118, but it uh, functions as a 1541 drive. This is the 1541-2, and uh, these four are uh, yeah, 15, regular 1541s. This one is a little special, it is uh, white colored. But this one, this is in fact a 1571 internal floppy drive for the Commodore 128D. And these two and these uh, three are in working condition. However, this one is a recent uh, acquisition that I haven't uh, tested. I don't know the status, if it works or not. And uh, that's the same with the 1571 internal one. I don't know if it's working. But if I get time to it, I'm gonna test this in my Commodore 128D and see if it works. All right, I'm gonna take a look at this bad boy first. And uh, this is the one I recently purchased uh, in unknown condition. So it uh, might be working or not. Uh, depending on that, uh, uh, <laughs> we'll see how this video turns out. It might be long or short. So I'm gonna hook it up now to uh, a Commodore 64. So this is one of my nicest uh, Commodore 64 C's and uh, yeah, I have cleaned it and uh, repaired it in uh, November 2020 by uh, the judge of that label. So uh, I'm gonna hook it up now and uh, see if uh, this works. So let's see now, and what I learned back in the day was that you should turn on the floppy disk drive before you turn on the computer. And if the red LED turns on and then off, then it has initialized correctly, which it uh, did, so that's a good sign. <laughs> So there were probably several revisions of these floppy disk drives. Uh, you can see the color difference. Maybe this is yellowed and that's why. But this one has a rectangular red LED and uh, this one is uh, round. Then turn on the machine. And the drive initialized again. So uh, let's test with this uh, random uh, floppy disk. And yes, it worked. <laughs> so that was uh, somewhat a disappointment because uh, sometimes I actually want to have a challenge and uh, try to repair something. But uh, now all we need to do is uh, take some service on this and uh, make it uh, work better. It probably can do good with some cleaning inside and maybe I'll check out some recapping if I have the correct caps. And we also get to look inside and see how this is built. And I recently also got this 1541 diagnostics cartridge. I haven't tested it yet so now is a good time and I'm gonna do some real diagnostics testings on this. But just testing the directory doesn't mean that it can load uh, 
a game so uh, let's uh, try and uh, load uh, space balls I think maybe this keyboard uh, is a little bad some of the keys Yeah, it is loading. It is a little bit uh, noisy, but not the regular noise. It's more like a loud humming noise from this one. But you don't hear the stepper motor and uh, the movement of uh, the read and write head as much. <laughs> yes, and that loaded uh, perfectly. <laughs> okay. If we compare the 1541 and the 1541 II, the most noticeable difference is of course the size and uh, yeah, another difference is that uh, the 1541 has a built-in power supply so you only need to provide uh, 230 or 110 volts uh, to this uh, with a regular IC uh, cable. However, this needs an external power supply and uh, Thus, it doesn't generate uh, as much heat as this one do. But then again, you need a separate power supply that uh, might get uh, damaged or lost over time. And if we take a look at the backside, uh, this one has a fuse because it runs on mains power directly. And uh, this one has a device dip switch, so you can change between uh, device 8 and uh, 9 uh, this one doesn't have that so if you want to change uh, the device number on uh, the regular 1541 you have to uh, modify the electronics all right before i continue with the uh, testing uh, with this and the other drives i'm gonna do some restoration of uh, this one and uh, to do that we of course needs to uh, open it up Judging by the feel and the sound of the screws, this device has never been opened before. Okay, this doesn't look too shabby at all. It is in very nice condition inside, not uh, very dirty or dusty at all. A little bit here and there, so I'm gonna clean it off. The motherboard looks very nice. Here we can see the different uh, ROMs and also this has a complete 6502 CPU and that's the 6502 the other are ROMs and some IO chips I guess and they most of the chips are socketed at least at the larger ones so that's nice I'm gonna take this further apart just so that I can get to every part and clean it up and take the plastics for a good bot, there's uh, six screws uh, holding it uh, to the bottom case. Then I'm gonna take off the contacts, uh, but before I do, I'm just gonna make a little mark here so I don't get confused when, <laughs> well, doesn't seem to be that <laughs> difficult after all. Of course, we need to be aware of these uh, large capacitors for uh, the power supply these can have some <laughs> voltage in them still and now we can take off uh, the motherboard get access to the drive mechanism underneath There's also two screws on the side that uh, holds uh, the motherboard. So now this comes off just like that. And here you can see the big fat transformer <laughs> that uh, is the power supply for this drive. 
and the actual uh, drive itself. And in fact, it doesn't look that uh, different from uh, the one I got here, which is the 1570 or 71. It doesn't really tell because, uh, of course, the drives themselves were made by other companies, not the Commodore. So this is a Mitsumi drive. This is also a Mitsumi drive. And now we should be able to lift off the whole thing and uh, yeah, take the plastics away. The plastics now goes into a bath of uh, hot dishwasher soap uh, water. I'm gonna take out the actual drive from uh, the metal case and uh, be able to take a peek underneath and uh, clean it up a little bit there as well. There's just two screws on each side. There it is, and this drive has a, a belt. Belt looks to be in a very good condition, so no issues there. So this drive actually looks extremely nice and clean, like it's never been used before. I was expecting a wreck when I <laughs> bought this but uh, this was a pleasant surprise. I'm gonna take uh, the drive and the motherboard to uh, blow off uh, the little dust uh, there is. A little bit of dust. The front plastics you can take it off if you need to clean it you just need a small hex key on the, the lock but uh, I, didn't uh, do that so I just already cleaned it with some uh, IPA so this just can go back into its case now not much more to do no just a little bit of regular cleaning of uh, the whole drive on this side just some alcohol and uh, some cotton swabs since this drive is very clean uh, there isn't much to clean but uh, one important thing you need to clean is uh, those uh, metal rods here the drive rails for uh, the read and write head it moves along uh, those and dirt can uh, build up on those and you can use your fingers to move uh, the head back and forth that's not an issue as long as you are careful, <laughs> not to try to bend anything out of position or anything like that. Finally, I'm cleaning the actual read and write head. This is just a single sided drive, of course, so there's just one side to clean. Finally, a little uh, lubrication on the moving part. Just a little bit of silicone grease on the drive rails and also put a little bit here to reduce the friction. The motherboard looks fine. I just blew away uh, most of the dust. Now I'm just gonna clean over it a little bit with uh, some alcohol to remove any dirt or yeah oxidation <laughs> make it look as new again probably a bit of overkill <laughs> this cleaning but uh, why not I was thinking about uh, recapping uh, the motherboard, uh, however I changed my mind. Uh, these big fat caps, this is uh, 6800 uh, microfarad and this is uh, 4700. I don't have uh, such caps in my stock so I have to order them and uh, maybe they are hard to get, I don't know. The smaller ones are standard ones, I could uh, do those but I choose to wait until I can uh, replace all and all the caps uh, look good so uh, I can't see anything uh, bulging or uh, leaking.
For the power supply of this thing, you can actually replace it with a modern switching one. This large transformer, it, it weighs over one kilograms and uh, yeah, of course it generates some heat and uh, <laughs> yeah, but if you want, you can replace it with a smaller modern one like this, uh, mean well. You need uh, 12 and 5 volts and uh, this has that and this seems to fit uh, just fine in here. So that is an option and to do that you actually need to uh, remove some components on the motherboard like these uh, voltage regulators and uh, the rectifiers I think. Uh, so I am planning to do that at a later stage at least uh, just to try on one of my floppy drives but not in this video. That will require a whole video in itself I think. Okay, that was the restoration part, uh, or at least the cleaning part of this video. <laughs> Some claim that restoration is a bit more than just uh, cleaning, but um, I cleaned the cases and uh, they look very nice and uh, color is perfect, I think. So uh, let's go on. I'm gonna assemble uh, the drive and then we can start some uh, real uh, testing of uh, some drives. The drive is assembled again. Let's uh, check if it still works. That I didn't uh, do anything uh, wrong here. Yep. Still works. Okay, so now I'm gonna run this uh, 1541 diagnostics cartridge and see what it can do. But before that I need to find a floppy disk because uh, this test involves writing to disks and yeah, I got a few uh, brand new ones here. These are double density, but that doesn't matter. Okay, I have never used this before, so I'm not really sure how it works, but we'll see. So here we have the diagnostics test cartridge. It's uh, worldofjourney.com. And it has different uh, things in the menu, alignment check, show BAM, disk command, directory, error scan, format, head exerciser, reverse knock, <laughs> speed check, performance test, validate disk and sector view. So well, let's try the first one. I'll go through all of this. Now, alignment check, space to check. Might be that this needs a formatted uh, floppy, so we'll see about that. So this seems to take a while, so I'll just let it run and then I'll come back to you. So I actually read the documentation now for the alignment check and uh, yeah, it needs a formatted disk. So I'll restart this. And this cartridge is a collection of uh, different uh, diagnostics tools for uh, the 1541 drives collected by Word of Johnny and he has uh, collected those and put it on a cartridge ROM. So I'm gonna format this fast format F name diag ID Yeah that sounds like a fast format. <laughs> that was really fast. Five seconds. So now I'm gonna run the alignment check again. And the first two columns should be uh, the same number and uh, the third column should be a percentage how accurate it is. So that seems good on this. And uh, the fourth column is between tracks or half tracks. This value can fluctuate a bit even on a well-aligned drive. So uh, yeah, seems to be okay. And this drive seems to be perfect aligned. Nice. If you visit the website worldofjourney.com, uh, you can actually download the, the cartridge binary if you want to make it yourself. The second on the menu is show BAM and BAM is a block availability map. So uh, let's uh, check that out. Yeah, this is uh, 
an empty disk, so uh, of course it shows uh, completely empty except the two blocks that uh, is probably the directory on the disk. If we try another disk that is full of data, we can check that as well. Yeah, there you can see it's uh, almost completely full. This command C, so uh, I'm not sure what kind of commands you can type here, if it is uh, the same as you type with the open command in Commodore Basic, so yeah, I'm not sure. So I typed V and I think that's validate and uh, it uh, validated OK. So uh, I guess if you type N you can uh, format D is directory, that's easy. <laughs> and error scan so this will search the floppy disk for any errors zero bad sectors that's good this is the floppy disk with the data on it format we have seen head exerciser let's try that one so step up and down okay i can hear here the head is moving and I know I just pressed F2, bump to track 01, so let's try F4, seek to track 18 or 35, and you can turn the motor on and off. Send IO, what's that? Okay, send a command and got OK back. Reverse knock. Okay, it knocks. <laughs> Don't know the purpose of that. Probably if it's stuck or something, you can use that. Speed check. Okay, so it's a little bit off uh, in speed, but only 0.3% uh, seems like. Performance test P. Oops, now it's formatting my disk with the games on. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Should have used a new disk. Well, I have a lot of those old floppy disks with games. So these are uh, test programs for the 1541 that you can find on the floppy disks. But uh, World of Jani has removed all the unnecessary code and uh, remove texts and everything just to make it fit on this 8k cartridge so uh, probably he removed the, the warning <laughs> mechanical test okay and now it starts writing i couldn't actually find any documentation for this cartridge the only thing i found was about uh, the alignment uh, test and the rest you obviously have to search around the internet to find some docs on now it's reading and everything seems to be okay Past. Alrighty, nice. Validate disk, I think we already did, but we can try this one as well. Yeah, same. And the last one is uh, sector view. I know this has been <laughs> emptied, so I need to find a disk with some uh, data on. I inserted another disk, so let's uh, read uh, track 18, sector 0. Okay, so there's the raw data from uh, that sector and the follow link probably goes to the next sector of that file. Yep, illegal track or sector. So let's try sector uh, 10. Let's see if I can find some recognizable text. So here's something, what, night the cat would <laughs> so this is some text from some game probably telecom troubles 
So that was it for all the tests and uh, now I actually see the warning down on the screen all data on the disk will be destroyed during the tests. <laughs> well this floppy disk drive is performing uh, top notch so uh, I'm very pleased with that. But now I'm gonna do some uh, tests on the other ones just to see if they're just as good. Uh, I am planning to sell some of these so I just need to know the status of them before I do that eventually. So here's the second 1541. This is the white one. This is a really nice uh, drive. Let's test a little bit on that. So I'm not gonna go through everything here. I'm just gonna run the alignment check first. So this seems to be um, good as well. Uh, the fourth column has some different uh, numbers than the previous one, but I guess green is good and uh, red is uh, not so good. So yeah, it uh, even looks better than, than the previous one. Yeah, that was good. And then I'm going to run the performance test. Yeah, seems to perform uh, very well this one too. Passed with green colors. And then I'm just going to run the speed check again on this one. Oh yes, this is dead on. Very nice. Next up for testing is this uh, 1541 2 and this one uh, requires its own power supply so I got a little one here. It's made in China <laughs> and uh, here's an issue it uh, shows the red LED and it starts spinning but it doesn't stop. Okay it stopped when I turned on the machine. I'm gonna run through the same tests. Okay, it just stopped immediately. Now it started. Uh, hmm, maybe there's some uh, instability in this drive. However, the alignment seems to be okay. There's a few red numbers, but uh, the third row is uh, 100, which is the most important. Error scan seems to be okay. No bad sectors. Then the speed check. Yes, very accurate. And the performance test. It took a very long time before it actually started the formatting, maybe one minute, but uh, eventually it started. Mechanical test okay. All right, so it passed too. Then we have this strange floppy drive. This is the Oceanic OC118 and uh, as I mentioned this is a clone and uh, I think they just copied the ROMs from Commodore and <laughs> yeah didn't bother them to do that. Maybe they did some uh, modifications to it. This uses an external power supply but it is not the same as uh, the 1541-2. So where did I put that one? <laughs> I found it. <laughs> it's a big power supply. <laughs> it uses a regular 5-pin DIN connector for power. Yeah, LED turned green. So this will be interesting to see if it's uh, fully compatible with the tests. Run the alignment check first. Okay, uh, seems to be working. At least the alignment is 100%, but uh, the track numbers uh, doesn't match up. I have tested the drive before and it worked fine with uh, normal use on a Commodore 64. I'm gonna try once more. Yeah, it's the same. It starts at one, but the second uh, track also <laughs> reports one. Maybe it's some incompatibility. Uh, you can't know for sure. I'm not familiar with the actual ROM that's in this drive at all. On track 18, it only reported 93%. Speed test. Okay, this is uh, dead on. Exactly 300. 
if the test is correct, seems a little bit uh, strange. And the performance test. This one started the formatting immediately. Formatting was uh, very quick. Mechanical test okay. Okay, that doesn't sound uh, <laughs> very nice. Yeah, read error failed. Gonna try once more. So it seems to have issues with uh, reading track one. Fast format. That was uh, very fast. <laughs> okay, over to the next drive. This one doesn't look very nice. It's a bit yellowed and I think I did some retrobrighting attempts on it. It says uh, repaired and tested okay in May 2019. I made a video about this uh, back in 2019 when I still operated from my kitchen table. You can take a look at that if you want. I think it was just uh, one of the small chips that were uh, faulty. Let's see how it performs. Oops, that does not look too good. <laughs> and I can hear on the sound too that it is not very nicely working. Okay, so it reads uh, track 255. <laughs> Didn't know <laughs> this uh, floppy disk had that many tracks. <laughs> So that is not a good result, whether it works or not with a real reading of a floppy disk, I don't know, I'm gonna test. Let's uh, try the error scan then. <laughs> it just flew through them, <laughs> that's not correct. No, that is not right. Speed check. Oh, it's off by uh, one RPM, that's okay I think, but uh, still this shows that this drive has issues compared to the other ones. At least it was able to perform uh, formatting and mechanical test okay. Okay, so it actually passed uh, the performance test, uh, so that's good. Uh, that means that this is a usable drive. I'm gonna run the alignment check again. Know that the drive formatted the disk. Maybe there's a difference. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> After formatting the disk, then the alignment seems to be very nice. So, uh, or it could be that after a bit of usage, uh, <laughs> it actually loosened up a little bit and uh, performs better. But of course, this is a mechanical device, so uh, the actual uh, electrons that goes onto the floppy disk and uh, alter its magnetic uh, particles. It uh, is actually different from drive to drive. Let's see now if it is uh, usable from basic. Let's load a demo. One of the demos I made myself back in the day. Yeah, that worked just fine. And uh, this is my first brief that I made as a low quick cracking service back in the 80s. <laughs> Not very impressive. <laughs> All right, that was uh, the external drives. I have a few more, but uh, I think those are uh, in very good condition, so I'll stop here, but uh, now I thought I'll test a little bit on this beauty, uh, my Commodore 128D. And this machine is in very good condition. Uh, it has a 1571 internal floppy drive. Not really sure if that uh, cartridge is gonna work on this machine, but let's test at least. Okay, let's uh, run the alignment check then. Now it's way off, but uh, 
I'm gonna do as I did with the previous drive. I'm gonna format the floppy disk on this machine and run it again. The fast format is working. Yeah, there you go. Now it's perfect. Very good result there. Performance test. Yeah, and this is very quick at formatting. Uh, regular formatting, not the fast formatting. That was even faster. <laughs> I have uh, serviced this machine and uh, cleaned the drive uh, and everything, so it should be in good condition. Yeah, passed, very nice. And uh, speed test, yeah, very good. 0.1 RPM, that's uh, nothing compared to 300. <laughs> So I knew this drive was working good and I haven't tested it like this before. However, the reason I took out the machine is I want to test this one. A replacement uh, 1571 drive and uh, I got this along with a motherboard for uh, the 128D and I have never tested it. I don't know if it works, so I'm gonna find out now. But before that, we of course need to open the machine so let's see what I find inside. There's the drive and it looks uh, exactly the same. Yes, I'm not gonna disassemble the drive. I'm just gonna connect it uh, with the machine open. So now I'm connecting this one. Well, easier said than done. It doesn't reach. Let's see now. Yeah, I think it just reaches now. Excited to see if this works or not. Turning on. Well, it starts up at least and it bangs. Nice. However, the motor is rubbing against the paper underneath. <laughs> okay, now it's silent. Nice. So I'm gonna insert the cartridge and check it out. Let's run the performance test first. P and return. Nope, failed. Well, it actually shows the directory, so it is kind of working. Let's run uh, that performance again. It says read error. Mechanical test, okay, and it is uh, writing. So it seems to have an issue with the reading. Um, maybe I should uh, just quickly clean it up a little bit and uh, do another check. But first I'm gonna run the alignment. Yeah, that seems okay. Uh, good values there. Oh yeah, that was real good. Gonna try and clean the head a little bit. It's a little bit uh, hard to reach, but uh, yeah, there you go. A little bit of a lubrication uh, might help with the movement here. No, still read error. I'm gonna try and uh, format the the disk. Yeah, it moved very nicely and it formatted. Uh, nice. Let's try one more time the P. <laughs> no, still a read error on uh, track zero. This machine can auto boot from a floppy disk. I'm gonna insert a CPM disk for uh, the 128 and see if it actually starts up and boots into CPM. Yeah, seems to have no problem with that. That worked, so I think this drive is just fine. I'm not sure why that uh, performance test couldn't uh, do its job, but uh, might be the floppy disk itself, some incompatibility, anything. <laughs> I'm trying another disk. No, still the same. 
So it found one bad sector. <laughs> Let's see the reverse knock. <laughs> cool. I tried to read track one, which is the first track and uh, sector zero, and it has problems uh, reading that. So uh, maybe there is some uh, alignment issues or something like that that prevents it from uh, going all the way down. Try to massage it a little bit. So I think maybe the issue is that the motor can't uh, drag the drive head uh, far enough uh, back and uh, yeah, there is an uh, alignment screw there, I think. I'm gonna try and adjust a little bit. Or it's not an alignment screw, it's a screw that holds uh, the metal belt. And uh, maybe there is some uh, adjustment if I drag it a little bit more and uh, then tighten the screw. Yes! <laughs> Okay, now it worked. Nice. Passed. Very nice. Okay, so now this uh, disk drive is uh, performing 100%. Just to see if we can read track one now. Yeah, nice. Okay, good to have taken some inventory of uh, the old stuff that I own and uh, yeah, this was the floppy disk drives. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hope to see you again soon and if you want to see more then please uh, subscribe and hit that like button on my videos and you will get to see more. Anyway, that was it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and a special thanks to my Patreons. See you, bye bye.